What is up ladies and gentlemen, it's Scott here and welcome back to another Fudge Muppet Skyrim Remastered build. This week we're bringing back a very, very old build and this time we fully fleshed out the backstory for all your role playing needs, there's new perks and an improved more fun playstyle. This is the Argonian Slave. The Argonian Slave has been subjected to the worst life imaginable. He was born in captivity, forced to labour away every day with nothing to live for. His life of suffering has made him bitter, angry and nothing will get in the way of his freedom again. Adversity taught him to survive and grief taught him how to outsmart those who cross him. Filled with hatred and distrust towards others, the Argonian slave is not the kind of fellow you want to get in a fight with. Before we get into the build, don't forget to check out the description where you can find timestamps to help you navigate throughout the video. But with that said, let's kick things off with race, standing stone and stats. The Argonian slave is a dark elf. Obviously a joke, he's actually an Argonian. Shocking, I know. As a result, his, his skin allows him to regenerate health 10 times faster for 60 seconds once per day. He also gets 50% resistance to disease and he can breathe underwater. Also, thanks to his cold blood, he'll have plus 10 lock picking, plus 5 light armor and plus 5 sneak, all of which will help out a lot with the final build. No surprises here with the standing stone, the lover stone early on will help all of your skills improve and then to help out your defenses, the Atronarch stone offers 50% spell absorption. As you see, this build doesn't put much focus into defense, so the spell absorption bonus will make a huge difference in combat. The Argonian slave stat spread will be 70% health and 30% stamina. As we said, defense isn't a focus of the skills, perks and gear, so we can use all the help you can get in the stats. As for stamina, 30% should be sufficient for all bow related actions, all sneak rolls and all dual flurries. The story of the Argonian slave is not a very pleasant one. He never actually saw his ancestral homeland of Black Marsh. Instead, he hatched in the Deshan Plain, west of Tyr. From the moment his reptilian eyes opened, welcoming the warm light of life between the cracks in the egg, he was the property of House Dress. He was plucked from his shell and thrown into a cell, until the day finally came when he would stop being a burden to the Dunmer and he could finally start working the salt rice fields. When he was of an age to work, he was fortunate enough to receive a threadbare coarse shift of brown cloth and a pair of old stained wool trousers. He could tell from the stench of the trousers that he wasn't the first to wear them, and the fate of those who'd worn them before him was something he dared not think about. For the entirety of his youth, he worked the fields under the watchful red eyes of the Dark Elf slavers. While voicing opinions was something forbidden to his kind, he couldn't help but feel an overwhelming hatred for his captors whenever he saw the heraldry of house dress. The shackles were an image of pride to these evil creatures, and the fact that they took pride in such treatment of those unlike them made him sick to his stomach. Though were he to wretch, there would be no food in him to spit up. The one thing the Argonian slave could take solace in was knowing that his brother was with him. While he didn't know his parents, he could only assume that they were both stolen from their nest at the same time. Despite living his entire youth in confined captivity, chances to interact with his brother were scarce. Every evening when the Argonians were too exhausted to continue laboring, the Dunmer slavers would shackle their wrists and then chain the slaves in collars connected to the rest of the slaves so that they could be taken back to their cells conveniently. While it was unbearably painful every time the slavers fell out of synchronization and the chains would become taut, momentarily throttling everyone in the procession, the Argonian slave looked forward to these times. Occasionally he would be chained in the front or behind his brother and they would be able to share a brief, quiet conversation before being subjected to isolation once more. Funnily enough, conversation topics grew scarce when all they got to experience was harvesting and transporting salt rice. But fortunately, the Argonian slave's brother was ambitious. He hadn't resigned to this life, despite it being all he knew. His brother planned to escape. The Argonian slave tried to warn him of how foolish running would be in broad daylight under constant surveillance, but his brother was resolute. He was certain he could pull it off. And so every day from now, the Argonian slave kept one eye on his brother, terrified that he would witness the Dunmer Devils cast him down. He waited in anxious anticipation until the 13th of Frostfall, when the Dark Elves were somewhat distracted by their day of worship to the Daedric Prince Mephala. When the slaver guards changed their post, the Argonian slave's brother dropped his hoe and simply ran in the direction of the trees. He almost made it 100 steps, for some reason the slave had counted, before a guard shouted to the others. And then came the fireball, cast by the red-eyed devil. It flew after his brother, sending a pyroclastic blast of hot hair towards the rest of the workers and scorching some of the salt rice beneath its path. And then the fire engulfed him. 
The Argonian slave had never heard his brother speak above a whisper, but now he heard him scream at the top of his lungs. A gargle of flame and blood came next until all that remained of him was a pile of glowing ash. The Argonian slave didn't cry. He had never known happiness, so he was used to the grief. He only felt numb. That night, as he walked in time with the other Argonian slaves to the ring of chains lightly bouncing with each motion, the Argonian slave plotted his own escape. He was inspired by his kin's foolish optimism. He used his fingernails to scrape a splinter of iron off his shackles and held it in a closed fist for the rest of the walk. While the others slept in their cells, the Argonian slave began learning to lockpick. He fumbled the flimsy piece of iron in the door to his cell every night, acquiring a new splinter of iron every time the last one snapped. Finally, one night when a fog rolled through the camp, giving him more privacy than usual, the slave heard a click. It was a quick and sharp click, the kind of sound that most people would never acknowledge, yet to him it was the most beautiful sound he'd ever heard. He snuck through the camp, making his way to the plantation. He tore off an entire row of salt rice. Let's call it my pay, he thought to himself, and then he fled west. He traveled for a very long time until the paranoia of capture left his mind. He walked for so long that he found himself in the mountains, witnessing snow for the first time. After months of traveling as he sat in the snows, he looked down at the land to the south, and he finally accepted that the slave masters had simply left him, probably replacing him with some other poor soul. He almost smiled from the relief, but that was cut short by the touch of a steel blade on his shoulder. An imperial in red cloak and chainmail took him prisoner and threw him onto the back of the cart. The Argonian slave's wrists then felt the familiar hold of shackles as he was taken north to Helgen. After escaping Helgen, the Argonian slave starts to realize that this freedom business isn't quite as brilliant as he had expected. He almost wished he could have gone back to the plantation after feeling the cold touch of the chopping block. But now that he has escaped, he will be very distrustful towards just about everyone, but he will choose to lie low rather than cause conflict with the residents of Skyrim. That doesn't include the Dunmer though. His hatred for the blood-eyed elves is embedded deep within him, and he will actively seek out opportunities to make them suffer if they so much as look down their nose at him. He'll do just about anything so long as there aren't law enforcers in the vicinity. What with the masses of Dunmer refugees in Solstheim and Skyrim, he'll have to cope with seeing their kind around quite frequently. But with this in mind, he will generally be reluctant to help out on any quests for Dark Elf characters. After what happened to his brother and how he improved on his brother's mistakes, the Argonian slave will stick to his winning formula. Subtlety and stealth where possible, avoiding attention. As for factions, he'll join the Thieves Guild for the reasons stated above. He's perfectly suited to get into or out of places he isn't supposed to be, and knows pretty well how to avoid being caught. It will actually be mostly down to you to decide how dark and violent the Argonian slave's future will be. It all depends on how you interpret the severity of his past. If you choose the path of resentment and anger for your playthrough, the Dark Brotherhood questline makes for a great fit. He'll follow the main storyline, seeing the Dragonborn powers as a means for self-preservation through strength. Similarly, he'll follow up with the Dragonborn DLC. These quests will help you find the weapons for the build much more easily. He will have some disdain for the vampires who actively seek to make the world a more awful place and will help the Dawnguard destroy them. And so with the Argonian Slave's depressing backstory, roleplaying and factions sorted, let's now look at how this will impact the build's skills, spells, perks and playstyle. The main skills for the build will be one-handed archery, light armor, sneak and lockpicking. Aside from watching one fireball ruin just about the only positive thing in his life, the Argonian Slave isn't too well versed in Magicka, so we won't need to worry about any spells for this build. Instead, let's jump straight into his essential perks. For most of his life, the Argonian Slave wielded a hoe and his target it was the stem of the salt rice plant. It's definitely a bit of a stretch to suggest that this was ample training for real world combat, but we can say with some certainty that he is quite capable of adapting and surviving. He emerged a free Argonian from a life of never ceasing turmoil. And since escaping and getting his hand on a sword, he has learned to see the heads of those who wish him harm, like the ripe salt rice stems. From the one-handed skill tree, take the middle branch up to and including Savage Strike and Critical Charge, and then take the far right branch up to Dual Savagery. As the Argonian Slave will be doubling down on swords, Dual Flurry is massive for taking the edge off slow swing speed. This perk will speed up dual wielding attacks by 35%. Also, Savage Strike is a classic favorite by adding 25% bonus damage to your standing power attacks and gives you the chance to reap the heads of your foes for the Great Severed Head Harvest. 
Next up we have archery. For those times where sneaking about with a dagger or two, swords just isn't an option. The Argonian slave likes to be able to pick guys off from a distance. From this skill tree, take everything. Also take all ranks of each multi-tier perk, but only the first level of critical shot. Mainly because there are more effective ways to use those two skill points. Keeping in line with the attack speed theme, Quick Shot will allow your arrows to be drawn 30% faster, which is massively helpful. I can't count the amount of times I've found myself firing arrows before they're fully drawn and having them flop disappointingly to the floor. Ranger is another helpful one as it allows you to move faster while the bow is drawn. Unsurprisingly, the Argonian slave decided to ditch the itchy woolen shift and stinky trousers pretty much as soon as he'd left the plantation. Now he opts for something far more formidable, yet still light enough to give him mobility. From the Light Armor skill tree, we suggest taking all five ranks of Agile Defender to give your Light Armor of choice a viable armor rating. Now for your thieving skills, the first of these is essential to the Argonian Slave's its elusive playstyle. Whether he's picking locks under the watchful eye of the Slaver Guards or creeping up on a target, this reptile learned how to be stealthy the hard way, with death as the consequences for getting caught. From the Sneak skill tree, take every perk and every rank. Silence is a notable perk here as it prevents walking and running from effect detection, allowing you to move much more freely without giving away your position. And thanks to this build's versatile arsenal, you can cash in on sneak attack multipliers regardless of the weapon you choose. Backstab increases one-handed sneak attack damage by six times, deadly aim makes bow attacks increase by three times, and Assassin's Blade gives you dagger sneak attacks 15 times the effectiveness. Lastly, we have lockpicking. There's not much to say about this skill that isn't summed up in the backstory, but now the Argonian Slave is in a position to use real lockpicks. And not the shitty shards of iron he could scratch off his rusted shackles. So his lock picking skill is only going to get better. From this skill tree, we recommend taking the main branch up to expert locks and then following it up to unbreakable. With locksmith, even master locks are significantly easier as you'll always be able to start close to the sweet spot. And with unbreakable, you can be reckless as you like with your picking because your lock picks will never break. You've probably got a good idea of how the Argonian Slave's playstyle will work. It's all about guerrilla tactics and ambushing unsuspecting enemies. You sneak to get into best position while your targets are scratching their balls and then hit them with the sneak attack damage. That'll either be with the bow if you're set up far away from the action or the dagger if you're all up in their grills. If you were using the bow, now is when you charge in. If you were using the dagger, then you're already in. Now switch to dual swords to dual power attack them to shreds. Thanks to the perk changes, the bow is definitely more viable when your cover is blown as it's focused around speedy moving and firing. The Argonian Slave starts off sneaky and then relies on his speed to stay evasive and stay safe no matter what they throw at you. As for gear, the light armor set you'll need to get your hands on is the scaled horn armor, complete with scaled boots and scaled braces. The weapons you'll want to include are the glass bow and glass arrows, as well as two Nordic swords and a Nordic dagger. As mentioned previously, Nordic weapons will be much easier to find once you make it to Solstheim in the Dragonborn DLC storyline. Subscribe to Fudge Muppet for more of the best Skyrim builds on YouTube and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. In case you weren't aware, we're giving away a free game of your choice to whoever can make the best photoshopped image of all our heads. For more details on how you can get involved, check out the latest episode of the Fudge Muppet Show and follow us on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching guys, I'm Scott and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.